Bruh, Yeezys are so dead, man. What is going on guys, Hess here from CollectiveKicks.com and if you guys are searching for this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. In this video I'm going to go over some pros and cons for the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Beluga 2.0. That is a mouthful but we're gonna go ahead and review this pair of sneakers. So I reached out to you guys on Twitter and Instagram and asked you guys to name one thing that you guys love and hate about the Beluga 2.0, and I had a ton of answers from you guys, so thank you guys for those that follow me on Instagram and Twitter. If you guys don't, you guys can check the link in the description and you can follow me on social. I definitely like to reach out to you guys before I do the video, just for fun to see if my thought pattern mimics your guys' thought patterns about the sneaker questions that we may all have. And uh, it's always fun when you guys unearth something that I totally didn't even think about. So love reaching out to you guys and thank you guys for being active on the Instagrams and the Twitter. So before we get into the pros and cons of the shoe, I'll give you guys a quick little overview of the shoe. First things first, you can see the box. The style number is AH2203, but this is where it gets interesting because these are known as the Beluga colorway. However, if you look, there is no Beluga listed on the box. It says gray, it says B orange, and it says DGSOGR. I'm not really sure what that is, but that's not consistent with the color codes that they mentioned on the Adidas website. Maybe it's a foreign language for dark gray, I don't know. The release date for the Beluga 2.0 was 11-25-2017 after Black Friday. Retail was $220. So the big question you guys may have is why is this even called the Beluga colorway? Also shout out to anybody that thinks of baby Beluga when we mention the name Beluga. But this colorway doesn't actually represent a whale, which is kind of interesting I know that beluga is a whale but this is the turtle dove colorway and it sort of represents the turtle dove and obviously the zebra colorway represents a zebra and the yebra represents a mythical yellow zebra so we're not too off by thinking that this could be related to the color of the animal however if you actually look up the color beluga it is closer to this dark gray colorway so that is the reason why this is called the Beluga colorway because of that dark gray so the reason why this is a 2.0 beluga is because the 1.0 version was this colorway Again, don't really see the Beluga tie-ins, but this was the Beluga colorway. I don't make these things up, but we just run with the naming convention as they're discovered. And to further confirm why this is a little bit confusing is because both colors are completely different. Even the dark Beluga-like color is different on both models. This one is a little bit lighter. It has a little bit more of a green hit to it. And obviously you could see the backing of the orange. This one has a gray with a gray backing. Interestingly enough, it's not even the same color, but we're calling them version one and version two. If we really had to name these something else though, what would you actually name these? Leave a comment in the comment section. Regardless, a quick overview of the shoe, you could see it has the prime knit upper as all of the Yeezy V2s. It has a pull tab on the back with a red racer stripe. You could see the stitching on the back and on the front of the shoe that definitely pulls together that whole Yeezy look. You have the Spli 350 on the side backwards and in the reddish color, but not the same red as the one on the pull tab. This is like a lighter red than this one is. It has a red Adidas Yeezy logo on the bottom of the shoe. Then it has the 3M reflective Adidas stripes down the back of the inside of the shoe. Then you have the Adidas boost that is encased in the ribbed midsole of the Adidas 350 V2. So now that we have a little bit of an overview of the shoe, let's go ahead and get into the pros and cons. So now for the pros, this Yeezy had the biggest volume release to date of any pair of Yeezys. 90,000 pairs dropped on Adidas US and I think 90,000 dropped on the UK site as well. So there's no question this was the most available pair of Yeezy V2s to date, which is a pro because this might be somebody's first pair of Yeezys that they were actually able to secure because all of the other ones were so extremely limited. And this gives somebody a chance to actually buy the authentic product. I think it's a good thing that they made more. It's not like they're making more of every single release. We saw the most limited release right there a couple weeks before these ended up dropping. And I'm totally on board with Adidas increasing production numbers on the Yeezy line. A huge pro for me is I just love this colorway. I think that this colorway is so clean. It's very subtle, but it's very complex as well with all of the different textures and the accents of the shoe. All in all, it's a gray shoe with little hits of red and I really like the overall look. I might actually paint these black just to have like an even cleaner look with no red on the shoe. I kind of like that idea. Leave a comment, what do you guys think about that? Is it too much or do you guys like the little hit of red? Which brings me to my next pro, which is that this shoe is extremely versatile. You can't wear some of the other Yeezy 350 V2s with anything because the colors are so outrageous and crazy looking. But this one you can wear with almost anything like I mentioned because it's so neutral. Another pro about this shoe is that the resale is so low right now that you can actually pick up a pair for like 350. It's the lowest resale we've seen on any pair of Yeezys under $400 mark and actually I predicted it before the shoe ended up dropping that the shoe would be under $400 just because we knew that the volume was so high but if you figure retail is 220 and people are still paying 350 for the shoes that's a really nice markup for somebody that's trying to resell them you can still make $100 on the shoe 
after all fees and everything is done. And if you're on the market for a pair of Yeezys, it's not a terrible price to be paying under $400 for a pair. I mean, some pairs of shoes are over $400 retail. At the end of the day, like $350, $380 for a pair of Yeezy 350 V2s is not as bad as paying like six or $800 for a shoe. So definitely worth noting that it is a pro for those that actually want to have the shoe to be able to actually own it it's a little bit cheaper for you guys this time than the previous. So you can't mention the pros without mentioning the Boost and the Yeezy Boost 350s because we already know Boost is life. The Boost is really nice on the shoe, but it is also paired with a nice thick prime knit material. The Yeezys are pretty much a sibling to the Ultra Boost. And if you guys actually want to buy the 4.0, this white colorway is super sick and you can buy them on adidas.com. Check the link in the description if you're interested. 180 is the retail on these and these are readily available. I also did a review on these recently, so go check the channel. And the final pro that I wanted to mention is that Kanye actually said that he wanted Yeezys for everybody and it seems like he's actually delivering. I gotta say I'm pretty shocked by this. I didn't think that they would ever be able to saturate the market with Yeezys. I think this year they did just the right amount of volume. At any given time, they can make a shoe more limited and drive hype up. But I think that Adidas is really smart by trying to make more because the demand is so incredibly high, like we already suggested. The more people that try them on, I think the more people are gonna like the shoes. So let's go ahead and transition to some of the cons about the Yeezy Boost 350. We'll start off with the sizing of the shoe. I saw a lot of different comments saying that the sizing was really odd on these shoes. Some people said they had to go up a full size run for the shoe, like I'm a size nine and a half and I go with a nine and a half in all the Yeezys. I can go with a size 10 in this and it doesn't make too much of a difference for me. It just adds a little bit of wiggle room left in the toe. I usually wear really thin socks with the Yeezy 350. So I don't know, leave a comment if you guys go up a half a size or not, um, let other people know. But for me personally, I usually go true to size, but there is some discrepancy on the sizing of the shoe. Another con that people mentioned was that there was construction issues on the Yeezys. They said that their pairs had a lot of flaws to the shoes, more flaws than we've seen in any other pair of the Yeezys. And if you think about it, it's very, very believable because you have a more mass produced pair of sneakers than we have in the past. So when you produce more pairs, there's definitely room for them to have more errors that are created because of it. Both of my pairs that I got are actually in really good condition. So I don't have that problem. But if you have had problems with that or you have pairs that are a little bit off, uh, go ahead and tweet me those pictures. I'm just curious to see. Another con that people mention is the fact that everybody ate on these shoes except for them meaning there was still not enough pairs available as big of a GR as these were. There was still a lot of people that struck out and I feel sorry for those that did. I really do. I hope that everybody eventually gets the ones that they want in the future, but this one definitely had a massive release and still people didn't get the shoes that they wanted. On the flip side of that, literally, StockX already has 7,800 pairs sold on their website currently. So a lot of people got them and a lot of people just try to make a couple quick bucks on the shoe. On that same note, another con would be the resale value. If you bought them with the hopes and dreams that they would be selling for $600, $500, then the reality sets in and people are paying down as low as 350, upwards of maybe 450 for the shoe, you're not making that Yeezy profit that you guys might have been used to in the past. The biggest flop for the resellers though is the ones that actually paid that 250 to the bot service to secure their pair. They got their pair, they paid their 250 plus the 220 and taxes on the shoe. And then next thing you know, they're upside down on their investment. Is the Yeezy resale dead? Is the Yeezy market dead at this point? Not really, if you consider you can still sell a pair of shoes and make $100 profit, $100 is a lot of money on one pair of shoes. It's not the 3X markup of the first Yeezys that ended up dropping. And we're not seeing prices like the Turtle Doves or the Pirate Blacks anymore in the over the thousand dollar range for a pair. And they're releasing a lot of different colorways. I personally don't think the Yeezys are dead. I think that it's just a market adjustment for more pairs being available and the price is just adjusting to whatever that might be. Within the end of this year though, Jordan Brand did some really smart things though by releasing the Cause 4s and the Off-White Air Jordan 1s. Those two generated a lot more hype than any of the V2 colorways of the Yeezys. So another potential con would be is if people are gonna be jumping back to Jordan Brand after this little fad that they had with Adidas and they, they just dabbled a little bit and now they're going back to the, to the Jordans and, and whatnot, which is totally cool. I mean, you can do whatever you want and you can buy whatever you like. It is a risk to Adidas potentially if that ends up happening. Which leads me to my final con and more of a discussion point. Do you think that the Yeezy 350 will be a timeless shoe? Like the Air Jordan 1, the Air Jordan 3, the Air Jordan 4. Those shoes are pretty much a staple amongst sneakerheads and they have been for 30 years. Do you think that the Yeezy Boost 350 line will have that sticking power along with the Jordan line? Or do you think these are gonna be like true religions and just end up going away? Or people are gonna be like, oh, you got those true religion or rock and republics? 
jeans on. Those are those things are terrible. I wonder how the market will react to these in like 10 years from now. These are really stylish shoes, but styles change so drastically and so rapidly that actually puts these at more of a risk than some of the other standard shoes that we have on the market. All right, so it's that time. Weigh in in the comments. Let me know your final thoughts on the Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Beluga 2.0. I personally think they're great. I love this colorway and I personally don't mind the larger scale release of these. I know that the trends are changing and the dad shoe thing is getting in right now, but I personally am not about the dad shoe vibe. I'm gonna stick with my V2s. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, notification bell if you wanna be notified. Thumbs up the video if you guys appreciated the video and leave some more feedback in the comment section. Thanks again. Have a good one. Peace guys.